I love crappy music. I've spent hour after precious hour of my short life browsing Reddit's crappy music forum. I've listened to the Fallen Vengeance cover of Seven Nation Army more times than I can count. I've interviewed Grant McDonald, the creator of Ram Ranch. But, but ultimately, ultimately, Finn, you know, I wrote my lyrics today for 240. I, you know, have got the ship and the ship and the starship and, you know, like the you know, like you know what's happening. I feel a duty and a drive to preserve, catalogue, dissect and understand the creation process of what some call outsider music. You uh -huh. Enter Sarah Brand and her viral music video from 2021, Red Dress. I came to church to praise all love. Sitting, coming for someone else. It didn't stew well with me, but I said it was a lover's deed. As discussed on many YouTube channels, far more successful than this one as addressed by the Mallon himself. Sarah Brand's red dress is an enigma wrapped in a mystery. Before I commence my detailed analysis of this, I feel you should know a few things about me and what my authority to speak on this topic consists of. I have a double major in jazz composition and digital journalism with a 4.0 GPA. I have a master's degree in vocal pedagogy and I'm currently studying for a PhD in socio-musicology. I've travelled internationally to cover political events such as the 2020 assassination of Iranian nuclear scientists and the proliferation of Christian extremist groups in Africa. Also, all of this is total bullshit. I have no qualifications to speak on anything. I live with my parents and I drive a shitty car from 2005. If you're after world-class journalism, I suggest you go back to the year 1980 when the industry was still relevant. With that out of the way, Sarah Brand. Yes, this is the real deal. The performance speaks for itself, however, I wouldn't be doing my job here if I didn't provide at least a baseline level of actual musical analysis. Part 1. The backing instrumentation. We've got drums, acoustic guitar and bass providing a fairly stock standard country music groove. In terms of the instrumentation, it sounds like many other country music singer-songwriter tunes. The chord progression is unremarkable, but acceptable, and the rhythm section feels pretty canned. I'm 90% sure that the drums are just from a program like Easy Drummer or Addictive Drums, a program that spits out procedurally generated drum beats in particular styles. The bass might also be computer performed, although I'm not as sure about that one. The guitar is a competently strummed acoustic guitar, and by the sounds of it, there's another guitar track in there playing picked notes. It's easy to imagine a Taylor Swift, Casey Chambers, Miley Cyrus, or Grant McDonald vocal over the top of this sort of backing. However, that's not what we have. This brings me to part two. Part two, the vocals, the f***ing vocals, god damn. Sarah Brand's vocal delivery has been described in a variety of ways. The AV Club described it as consistently off pitch. Newsweek states that Brand doesn't have the voice of an angel. Anthony Fantano, the melon himself, had this to say. Sarah does have a very peculiar singing uh, delivery and timbre. If you, <laughs> just that video title, is this song bad on purpose? Anyway, if you hadn't noticed already, I'm going to say it plainly. The vocal performance in Red Dress is completely, entirely, impressively out of tune. There doesn't seem to be a single moment in the song where her vocals are actually on pitch. It isn't even clear what notes she's trying to sing in the first place. It sounds worse with pitch correction. Automatic pitch correction is so confused that it can't figure out what note she's trying to sing and it's just rapidly slingshotting between several different pitches. Just like I rapidly slingshot between several different bits. Many places have made comparisons to Rebecca Black's Friday, which I found interesting. If you don't remember Friday, it was a pop single from 10 years ago produced by Arc Music Factory, the same crew behind Alison Gold's Chinese Food. It's Friday, Friday, gotta get down on Friday. 
Arc Music Factory's general MO was this. Find some young teenager with big dreams and rich parents. Singing ability optional. Write a bland, inoffensive, banal pop tune for them about some very toothless concept like Thanksgiving or looking forward to time off school. Record them singing the song and absolutely slather their vocal performance in auto-tune. Add more auto-tune. Produce a mid-budget music video for them. Then release the resulting single and music video onto the internet for millions of people to see and mercilessly lampoon. Collect fat stacks of cash from the kid's parents and sign some kind of way if you're relating to cyberbullying. What does this have to do with Red Dress, you may ask? Well, Red Dress channels the strange energy of something like Arc Music Factory, except with two major exceptions. The first exception is this. Sarah Brand apparently entirely self-funded and created it on her own. She is listed as the singer and songwriter, as well as the writer, choreographer, director, and editor of the music video. This is a Sarah Brand Industries product. The second exception is this. Arc Music is known for drowning its singers in autotune. Sarah Brand has opted to sing entirely without auto-tune. Why? It's unclear. Nearly all modern pop tracks feature at least some form of digital pitch correction. Modern country utilises pitch correction heavily, and any mix engineer in their right mind would throw the book at Sarah Brand's vocal performance in an attempt to get it to resemble something vaguely sonorous. The absence of auto-tune is the single most baffling musical element of Red Dress. Why is there no auto-tune on this track? The question brings me to the reason that I've made the video and the question that's being asked by virtually everyone talking about Sarah Brand. Is the vocal performance intentionally off-key? Is this song supposed to suck? Part 3. Is this song supposed to suck? When I say that everyone was asking this question, I really do mean it. And more than two years later, there still isn't a definitive answer that everyone is satisfied with. Every bit of press coverage that Red Dress has received centres around the suggestion that Brand has created the tune as part of an elaborate social experiment that is related to her degree. Brand's LinkedIn profile states that she has a Bachelor of Arts in Sociology from UC Berkeley and a Master's in Science of Sociology. This feeds into the hypothesis that the music is some sort of social experiment. Brand herself went on record several times saying that the vocal performance of Red Dress is intentionally out of place. And in recent interviews, she has pivoted to outright claiming that the whole thing is in fact an elaborately constructed ruse. But she didn't always have this tack. Over time, her story has become more refined and consistent. In an early statement to the BBC, Brand said, the style in which I sing the song was important because it reflected the story. The vocals don't seem to quite fit. They seem out of place and they make people uncomfortable. In an interview on a Toronto radio station called KISS 92.5, the Roz and Mocha show, Brand states that it has been so fascinating to see the comments and everyone making these wacky hypotheses about experiments and marketing strategies. People have been quite clever with it, actually. In more recent interviews and videos, Brand has ostensibly been clearer with her intentions. In a TikTok video later reported on by the BBC, Brand said, Feel confused? That's a common sentiment after watching my music video. Red Dress was about judgment. And so you follow this woman into a church community where she's met with exclusion and judgment. So how can I make the real world audience feel that judgment? Well, one, the vocals are out of place, just like that character. And two, the music video's music being out of place and out of key incite judgment from the real world audience. That's you. So this holistic music video experience is created in which the real world audience experiences the concept of the music video. What other information do we have? Well, in terms of evidence in favor of Brand's story, we have repeated first-hand testimonials of her saying that she chose to make the vocals out of place to elicit judgment. These words are chosen very specifically and carefully each time. It's also the story that the news outlets are running with. I find it dubious, however, for a couple of reasons. In fact, I think it's almost certain that Sarah Brand is attempting to retrofit a narrative. There's more though. In a Zoom interview with The News House, Brand maintains, I didn't know if the judgment would be in terms of how the vocals were reflecting the theme of the story, or if it would be more, oh my gosh, why is she doing this in a church? God forbid. Sarah seems earnestly wondering if people would be more judgmental about the vocals or the fact it was set in a church. I think anyone who has heard the song would probably understand the confusing nature of this. To me, this does imply some lack of awareness about the vocals themselves. This, along with new evidence, old song demos and changing narratives, calls for a deeper line of investigation. But first, a word from our sponsor. 
play Raid, Shadow Legends, download the game and then spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on pay to win upgrades so you can pay to win against the other nine year olds playing the game. It's absolutely fantastic. Eat shit and die. Also, we don't believe that, so Raid, if you want to sponsor the video, please do. We would also accept sponsorship requests from NordVPN, Bridge Middle Millist Wallets, or look, anyone. We need money. We f need some money, guys. Come on. Part 3.5. Brand if you do, brand if you don't. The most recent comments on the matter are from the Vanity Podcast, where Sarah elaborates on her decision to apparently sing badly on purpose. Um, and that's part of the reason why I was even the person in the video, because, um, you know, I, I come at these projects as a, as a filmmaker, a director, a writer, and really not an artist. So I, I wanted, I knew I wanted to portray judgment in this way and tell the story of a woman who is an outsider in church community and then make her vocals all out of place, just like her. So then, you know, you feel that judgment, but I wasn't sure I was going to be in it. And then I heard myself singing the song because I wrote the song mm -hmm. um, and I play guitar and uh, piano. And I was like, wow, I can sing it so perfectly out of place. <laughs> this actually really works in some, some way. And, you know, it's so hard to work with other people in the height of COVID. It was, um, it was difficult to get any gatherings together and Oxford was very strict. Um, so I was like, okay, you know, for, for ease and almost amusement and it just all kind of fell into place. I was like, maybe I am actually the right person to play this role. This sounds feasible and is a great and funny angle, which is why I think a lot of news outlets have run with this. It basically confirms conspiracy theories people were throwing out when the video initially gained traction. People love to be right about things and Brand handed them a giant check mark for their speculation. I want to interrogate this further though. Parts of it seem dubious under scrutiny. The biggest issue for me is what happens if it doesn't go viral? Relying on a massive audience to prove your point is a pretty flimsy thing to build a sociological experiment on. Consider the world where it doesn't go viral. So she puts the video up for her friend group to see and she wants them all to hate it. And internally she's going, ha, they think I suck. Everything is going to plan. The ultimate social experiment. 200 people think I'm shit. But some aren't convinced. The most recent quote regarding this, as of this video, acknowledges online theories that Brand is potentially attempting to retrofit a narrative, and it has this to say. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, which are the vocals. I know initially, and even myself included, people weren't sure if it was, like, what's going on here? Is this intentional? Is this... <laughs> It was out for quite a while before you pulled back the curtain and said, here's what the whole premise of this was. It it kind of marinated out there in internet land for quite a while. Yes, it did. Um, that was very intentional um, because most of the um, driving traffic to it was this discussion point of whether or not it was an experiment. Um, and I didn't want to answer that because, you know, when you when you supply an answer to something like that, you allow someone to immediately then classify it. Um, and categorize it. And the the point of the whole project was, you know, to prompt some kind of introspection. What do you say, or I guess, or think now about people who, and it was on Reddit, so take it with a grain of salt, people thinking this is a, a backpedal because of the vocal performance? Yeah, it plays into the whole concept of judgment. You know, I mean, that that's, you know, often negative um, rhetoric was definitely prompted by the project. And um kind of flew past me on a personal level because sure. again I didn't identify as an artist so I didn't really care that they were um critiquing the the vocals because I knew it served a greater purpose and that was far more important to me but yeah so by everyone judging how I was portraying myself and how I was telling the story you know you brought that real world audience into those church pews of judgment which was you know, in my mind, perfect and achieved what I was out to achieve. This is what I'm going to call a scrutiny escape clause. Brand has established on record that if you're suspicious of the legitimacy of her explanation, you're proving her point for her. It's a trap. She set up a dichotomy where no matter what opinion you have, she wins. There's no standing in this situation that allows legitimate criticism of her material. I think for most, it doesn't elicit judgment so much as confusion. See, I don't think people are saying, what an idiot, what a delusional person, what a terrible musician. They're just saying, what? Most damningly, I don't think it prompts introspection in the viewer. I think it prompts bewilderment. Part four, is this song supposed to suck? No, really, is it? In a nutshell, Either Help! I'm in a nutshell! Sarah Brand intentionally sung terribly as an explicit theme of the piece, as she claims. Or 
Sarah Brand retroactively claimed that the performance was bad on purpose after a negative reception to the song itself. Let's examine those two options. As mentioned before, one of the biggest factors leading people to accept the performance was intentional is the fact that Brand is a sociology major. I'll admit this is pretty compelling, but the only real way to verify the connection is through testimonials from Brand herself. I want to quickly talk about my own attempts at engaging first-hand sources. I attempted to contact Brand directly via her website so I could ask her about the hypothesis myself. Receiving no response, I then had a look through some of her social media to find the name of the person who engineered the mixed red dress. The mix engineer had their name taken off nearly all of Brand's advertising. The name is not available in the video, the credits, the description, or nearly anywhere. For that reason, I'm going to assume that the individual in question doesn't want their name out there or otherwise associated with the project. So I won't mention who they are or how I found them. What you can know is that they declined to comment on the situation at all, as did people Sarah Brand is currently collaborating with. In absence of first-hand sources, analysis is required. To recap, if Brand's claims are true, Red Dress is essentially a social experiment, a study in judgment, and not just an attempt to provoke, but a crafted attempt to provoke. It's employing the bizarre element of a completely unpassable vocal performance on purpose. She knew exactly what she was doing when she did it, and it worked perfectly, coaxing millions of viewers into an elaborate snafu. The only problem with that is a song posted to her YouTube channel the previous month, titled Fantasy. Fantasy is a song also written and sung by Brand. It's a reasonably sweet song addressed to, presumably, the lover that is seen with her in the music video. It also has exactly the same problems that Red Dress does without any of the thematic implications. The vocals are arguably even worse than the Red Dress vocals, and the lyrics are just as baffling. This was released one month before the release of Red Dress, which strongly implies they were filmed and recorded around the same time. There are also demos for both songs that consist of her singing in a very similar way to the final recordings. It speaks to a stark lack of awareness that Fantasy was published onto the internet, auto-tune free, for millions of people to see and lampoon, without any kind of clear thematic hook like Red Dress has. If Red Dress is a calculated effort to turn the viewer into a participant in the art, then what is Fantasy? I believe it's the most telling element that speaks against the narrative that Red Dress is trying to create. In Brand's later videos, her vocals are auto-tuned to within an inch of their life. Fantasy just seems to be a song addressed to a lover. It doesn't have any themes of feeling out of place or judgement, and it has the same issues as Red Dress. The vocals, the lyrics, the confusion. Brand's claim that the vocals are out of tune on purpose to fit the theme of Red Dress doesn't make much sense if one month earlier she released a self-composed love song which appears to be completely earnest, still having all the same problems that Red Dress did. It reeks of backpedalling, and I don't buy it. Part 5. So what happens next? In my opinion, the evidence points to Red Dress being earnest and not something that's intentionally performed out of tune. Let us know your thoughts and theories in the comments. However, I think making this statement on its own and then ending the video would be pretty useless and also mean-spirited. You see, while Red Dress doesn't hit the mark, it's not too far up. You can definitely see the merit in the bones of the song. I think with a few more drafts of the lyrics and a different vocal performance, the theme of judgement would have carried through in a way that wasn't just confusing to the audience. I would personally lean more heavily on the video to try and elicit those themes of judgement rather than the music as I don't think people were picking up on the themes as they were. Some could argue that by turning around and saying actually the audience is the butt of the joke the whole time, Sarah is attempting to avoid humiliation in front of millions of viewers and honestly I can't blame her. Still, it seems to have worked as she's released a couple of very auto-tuned hyper-pop tracks in the wake of Red Dress and racked up a half-decent number of views with them. Probably not enough to make her money back, but certainly a decent showreel for her as a director. 
Her lyrics continue to confuse, but her new song On the Surface is so fucking weird that I actually like it. On the surface, I'm not lost. No one knows the cost. In fact, one can look at On the Surface and note that perhaps that song is more off putting rather than confusing. It almost seems as if the stated premise for Red Dress is actually being incorporated into newer material, but On the Surface doesn't really have themes of being out of place. It seems more to be intended as a harrowing tale of emotional abuse set to disorientating, genre-hopping music. Despite the constant negative press kefefe, the attention-grabbing nature of Red Dress has resulted in a tangible audience for Sarah Brand, despite being an audience that's mostly in it for the lulls. Perhaps, like Grant McDonald, the Sarah Brand community will morph into a group of people who enjoy her music for all that it is. That brings me to my final point. Please don't be a dickhead to Sarah Brand. I know me saying that might seem a bit rich after spending an entire video attempting to prove her story false, but even if I'm completely right, which isn't hugely likely, don't go onto her YouTube channel and call her a liar. I am of the firm opinion that if someone uploads something onto YouTube, they are opening themselves up to fair criticism, but also they deserve basic respect for having the stones to upload something in the first place. Brand could be a bad singer-songwriter or the best musician on the planet. It wouldn't matter because she would still deserve that basic respect. Sarah, if you're watching this, keep making music, no matter what it is or how it turns out. You have found a niche occupied by nobody else and that is an extremely difficult thing to do in this day and age. Part 6. A final thought and a musical experiment. The question remains, is Red Dress a good piece of art? The purpose of art is, in a broad sense, to provoke thought and introspection. Part of the reason outsider music interests me so much is that few art forms can provoke thought quite in the same way as a piece of outsider music does. Red Dress is objectively a successful piece of art in that it does provide a platform for all kinds of discussion, debate and thought on the nature of music as a whole. Does that mean that it's good? The answer to that question is well above my pay grade. Criticism isn't useful unless it's constructive and it would be in total poor taste to just rip apart Brand's work without offering some kind of alternative. So what I decided to do was take the bones of Red Dress and rewrite the instrumental arrangement, the melody, and some rhythmic elements to show how close Brand actually was to having a reasonably enjoyable bit of pop country. In the process of rewriting the song, I enlisted my colleague and friend Chloe Jones to help revoice and tweak elements of the vocal performance. I also added instrumentation to help the pop country feel of the track. I recomposed the guitar solo so it was no longer in a different key to the rest of the song. What follows is my humble attempt to produce Red Dress into a fully fledged country pop tune like one might hear on the radio. Hit it. I came to church to praise all love. Sitting coming for someone else. It didn't do well with me. But I said it was a lover's deed. Didn't trust my own feels That someone else behind my wheel he said it was love driving me The only one who should steer is me Cause what they saw They see me in a red dress Hopping on the devil's face Looking at the love face They're judging disgust What am I doing here?
All the eyes judging in disguise They don't see me, they just see lies They see me in a red dress Look different from the rest Stunning children rest as they join in a rush What are we doing here? They see me in a red dress Look different from the rest Stunning children rest as I lose my disguise What am I doing here? I'm striking the beat Striking the beat oh, I'm striking the Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Brain Source. For all the people in the comments saying, this is dead, the channel is dead, too bad they never upload anymore. Well, you're kind of right, but we have just filmed two more episodes for your viewing pleasure. Being one of only two Finn Taylors on the internet, I thought the name Finn versus the internet was safe. However, this guy who apparently has the exact same name as me has launched a show called Finn versus the internet. Obviously, this presented me with a conundrum. Either I could launch a massive PR campaign, vilify the other Finn, court drama, and run up thousands of dollars in legal fees, or I could change my name. Well, the name of the show, at least. I used to be in a band with a specific name that I won't share for the purpose of the video. We'll call it Jacob's Ladder. After gigging for a couple of years under this name, a different band strung up in the same city calling itself Jacob's Ladders. We contacted the band leader and said, hey, could we meet up and sort out the fact that we both have the same name? And the representative of the other band said, nah. With this story in mind, I choose the path of least resistance. The new edition of Finn vs. the Internet will be called Brain Source. That's what it's gonna be called. If you think this name sucks, please understand that it was the best one available. Other names available to us included YouTube Sewage Plant, Sex Music Analysis, Finn's International Mud Flap, Tomato Soup Puree, The Australian Liberal National Party, Nine Gag Meme Review, Attack of the Mutant <laughs> Ninjas. I actually like that one, that was awesome. Stay tuned to The Slop Shack Presents Brain Source, formerly Finn vs. the Internet, formerly Finn's Vomitorium, changed to prevent beef with the other Finn Taylor. <laughs>